Uh, we started Easter, uh, like what, two, three weeks ago? <laughs> I don't know what, right? So um, the next celebration that we're going to have is the Ascension, right? And the Ascension is when Jesus was actually lifted up to heaven. That's going to happen on May 9th, right? That's on Thursday. So uh, we, uh, we're going to have a service, but it's going to be a recorded service. You don't, you, you can, you can actually do it from home. So what happened is that you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record, uh, uh, you know, the, the service. So at 7 p.m. on May 9th, it's going to be available on YouTube. So I'm going to just send it to the, uh, you know, to, um, uh, to you guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Pastor Elijah Sira is going to um, um, do the sermon. I think he's from Virginia. I think he's from Virginia. Like yeah. Okay. All right. So that's a little announcement there. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's pray first. Okay. Let's pray for our um, for our word of God today. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that um, you have given us protection. You have given us guidance throughout the week and. At this moment, we want to focus our heart to learn more about you through your word. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us your word because through that, we can actually can get closer to you, know you, know you more. And we pray, especially this morning, Lord, so that I um, can bless this humble servant of yours so that uh, everything that's being delivered is only according to your will and everything can be applied to our life in the days to come. Be with us, Lord, and give us concentration in our hearts as we um, enjoy your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The, um, the title today is Living Now, Now in the Future. Right? Living Now, Now in the Future. Now, I put on the, uh, um, the verses, the passage to be 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 to 18. But I think to understand all the context, we're going to read the whole chapter, right? But uh, just the beginning here, I'm just going to read actually uh, from verse 1 to 7. So let's, uh, let's stand and we're going to read uh, the Word of God. Now, um, Peter, everybody knows Peter, right? Peter is the first disciple of Jesus Christ, right? Um, he's very outspoken and this, is, this letter is uh, written you know, uh, later on, after Jesus was resurrected, um, Jesus, uh, after Peter is actually very active in the ministry, right? And then if you read uh, uh, his first letter, it's open uh, in verse 1, in 1 Peter chapter 1, it says, Peter, the apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of dispersion of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So you know that this letter of Peter, the two letters of Peter that we call it in the Bible, right, both of them are dedicated to the exiles, to the people that you know, believers in, 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 in exiles, in, in, in diaspora, what we call, just like what we are right now. Okay, so we can identify with the audience that Peter actually write the letter to. Okay? So 2 Peter chapter 3, I'm going to read it from verse 1 to 7. This is now the second letter. This is now the second letter that I'm writing to you, beloved. In both of them, I'm stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the prediction of the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior to your apostles. Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desire. They will say, where is the promise of his coming? Forever since the father fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberate, deliberately overlook this fact, that the heaven existed long ago and the earth was formed out of the water and through water by the word of God. And that by means of this, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and the earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept under the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. Those are the word of God. Is be seated. Okay. Uh, our Sunday routine, right? I, I think we all are here our Sunday routine, right? We go to church. Right, um, you know, um, we sing songs, we do fellowship, and then we listen to God's words, right? And then we have lunch, 
Let's <laughs> together, right? and then after that, oh, I don't know, right? And then you can it's free. You can you can you can enjoy your days, right? Every Sunday we're gonna have that routine, right? Um, now some it's it seems like a routine that's pretty you know pretty customary in America, right? In, in where we live, but as you see here, more and more you can see actually less and less people actually going to church nowadays, right? And you know, not only that, that I believe that there are some time in, you know, during our life that we ask ourselves, what are we doing here? <laughs> right? I mean, we come every Sunday here, it is really something that we want to do. Right? And it's a, uh, it's a question that, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, I ask too. And that is a question that we need to be worried about. Right? Because there's a lot of forces nowadays in the world that will try to pull us away from church, from the Word of God. And we have to live, uh, you know, carefully. We have to live very, you know, um, um, uh, you know, um, know knowing that there, there is that forces out there that are trying to pull us away from God's Word. If you look into uh, a, a recent uh, Pew Research Center uh, research, you can see that the church attendance in America is actually declining. Right? You can see here, uh, you know, the, the left side there is the, uh, the U.S. church attendance declining. Uh, you know, you can see that you know, uh, in 2007, uh, uh, you can see 54% latest studies, uh, 54% to 45%. Right, so it's it's going down, uh, and then um, uh, so the, the 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 blue graphic there is for those that attend church at least monthly. Mm -hmm. They're not even talking about weekly here, monthly, <laughs> right? And you can see fifty-four percent to forty-five percent, right? Now the orange one is actually those that attend church only a few times a year. So you can see going up right there, right? And then here on the on the right on the on the right side, right? Those are the uh, the smaller share of adults identified as Christians. So you can see here in 2007, 78 percent of people actually you know uh, identify as Christians. Now only 65 percent, right? And those that claim as religiously unaffiliated, a lot of them are atheists, right? Rise rise from 17 percent to about 26. So this is our pure research, right? It may, it, it, it may not mean anything for us, but this is what, what we have, uh, you know, uh, based on the research. So you can see your church attendance is actually declining out there, right? The next one in here is that this is the Christian population growth compared with uh, overall growth in each region, right? So each region you have, you know, uh, the growth, you know, every, uh, how, how, how many people, uh, how many babies born compared to how many people become Christians, right? And you can see here that it, in Europe, Europe is pretty bad right there, right? I mean, they're not even growing the population. Nobody be having babies <laughs> like in Europe, like minus 6%, right? And then minus 18%, meaning that more and more people are becoming atheists, becoming not a Christian. The only positive thing here, the one that's, that, 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 uh, that shows that the red one, the one on the bottom, right, the, the red one, is greater than the, um, uh, gray one, because the red one is actually the, the growth of Christian. The gray one is actually the growth of babies, the population, right? The, the only place where the growth of um, uh, Christians is more than the population growth is in Asia. So that's where, you know, a lot of, a lot of people actually in, uh, in Asia is, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, the growth of Christianity is actually very, very promising. Now, in America, America is going to be the one, the, the, the second from the bottom right there. You can see 26 percent of population growth, but only 8 percent. You know what? If you want to be a missionary, don't go anywhere else. Stay here. <laughs> this is your, this is your field here, right? There's a lot of, a lot of people that needs God's words in America. There's a lot of people that you can evangelize. Your friends, your family, right? And people that you know, you can, uh, that you will be every day. 
right? Now, but, but why is that, right? Now, if you, if you look into, in, you know, you ask yourself, right, that there is something that all, you know, and we are a Christian and we want to be honest. We sometimes we ask ourselves, right? So, is this true? Is, the, is what we believe is actually true or not? Is what, is what we do in every, every Sunday we go to church, is this something that, you know, is actually worth it? Yeah. And those are the questions that naturally come to us. And it's not a matter of whether you have that question or not. It's, it's a matter of how you're going to answer that question. Right? Because now you see here, as, as we just read on, 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 the, uh, uh, on, on the book of, on the letter of uh, Peter here, right? If you look back into uh, one chapter back, we, we just read 2 Peter chapter 3. Now if we go back to uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, Peter is always warning us about false prophets, false teachers. And in chapter 3 now, he warned us about scoffers. Oh my. There's <laughs> a lot of people here, right? A lot of people. Uh, in, in, in Second Peter chapter 2 here, but false prophets also arose among the people, just, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. There's a lot of false teaching around here nowadays. Christianity is still, you know, one of maybe the biggest population in, the, in, in America. But there's a lot of false teaching. So you have to be very careful. Now for, for those of you who are Gen Z, <laughs> thing, right? Um, based on uh, a research, your first, uh, you, when you want to know something, right? Uh, the first thing that you go to is TikTok. <laughs> now that is very dangerous right there, right? Even us, right? Me, if I want to know about something, you know, right? Where do I go first? I type it in Google, right? <laughs> Right? Even that, sometimes, you know, um, there is a bias there. Because Google can actually play around with the algorithm to show you what, what they want you to see first. Right? So it's very, very dangerous. There's a lot of things out there, especially, you know, with the social media, a lot of digital information, that you really have to be careful and you really have to know which one is correct, which one is not. Because there's a lot of information out there. Right? And when you talk about false teacher or false prophet, don't think about you know somebody that like like that guy, <laughs> right? You know, you know, with a with a you know angry face and you know creepy face and you know uh, with a, with a red cape. Not necessarily something like that. He may be something that's very you know gentle, that speak very softly, you know. Or maybe it's not a, a person. Maybe it's a group. Maybe an institution, right? So. You can see here, if, if, you, if, if you look around of it, there's a lot of it in, in, in media, in, in, in news nowadays, right? People that says that, you know, uh, what you believe as Christianity um, is not true. Jesus, last past Easter, Jesus was from death, right? If you ask, is that, um, that is a belief that people says that is maybe just a myth, right? Jesus died on the cross with Jesus. Maybe somebody actually asking, questioning whether Jesus actually exists. Right? And whether the teaching of the Bible is true. Can you believe the Bible? How can you believe in the Bible? These are, you know, uh, 66 books that straightened in 1400 years. How can you believe that? That's not a topic, right? That's probably one of the setups. We can, we can probably go over that topic. That's a very interesting topic. And how are you going to believe it? Bible, right? But the point here that you have to be anxious about, that you have to be always thoughtful, is that there's a lot of false prophets, false teachers, right? And then in 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 uh, Second Peter, you know, chapter three, the one that we just read, it says that knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in in the last day, um, in the last days, with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. They will say, "Where is the promise of His coming?" For ever since the father fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. So what does the scoffer uh, did? They want you not to believe one. The second time. Right. They will say, where is the promise of the second coming? Who, who's second coming? Who's second coming? Jesus. Jesus. Right? 
So this is the, according to Peter, this is the main message of the scoffers. They don't want you to believe on the promise of the second coming. Why? Because of the delay. That guy is holding a, <laughs> a watch of time, right? And so it's, it's looking at the time. See, time, time, you know, time is moving and what happened? Nothing happened, right? That creates doubts on us, right? Now, what is that promise of his coming? You can see here in Acts 1, chapter 11, um, you know, during the ascension, when Jesus was lifted up to heaven, right, there's an angel here that says, Man of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. There was a promise. When Jesus was lifted up to heaven, there was a promise in the Bible saying that Jesus will come back. Right? James 5, verse 7, verse 7, it says, Be patient, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. So James says the Lord will come again, right? John 14 verse 3, Jesus says, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Even Jesus himself promised us that he will come back. And then Revelation 22 verse 7, you know, it says, Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Okay? Jesus going to come again and that is one of the center doctrine that is center belief as for us Christians right Revelation 19 verse 11 this is how uh, the, the old senior apostle John right when he was in, in the island of Patmos right he actually saw a vision and this is what his vision the vision of when Jesus come and then he so John wrote here, Then I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, many crowns. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. Can you imagine how, what, you know, how the vision looks like here? Right? I mean, I, I, you know, I, uh, I, I was like, you know, trembling myself when I did this, right? He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nation, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will treat the white press of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The vision of John, Apostle John, of the coming, second coming of Jesus. A glorious event. And that is what we believe, that is what we long for. Right? And if you look at that, what the scoffers nowadays doing, they try to pull us away from their belief. And why? Why scoffing Jesus' promise? Why scoffing Jesus' promise to come? <coughs> because Jesus coming now become our hope. Is is as as James says in James 5:7, be patient. It's the source of our patience. It's the source of our encouragement. Why? Because our life is difficult. Our life is difficult. You study, you work, there is a financial issue, there is a family issue, there is a lot of things that are happening in our day, our daily life. You know, problem comes, problem goes, problem, another problem comes. Life is not easy. If you think that you live a good life, be thankful. Because that means that you are being blessed. <laughs> okay? But if, you're, if you feel your life is difficult, right? The Bible says, be patient until the coming of the Lord. So there is a way, there is an encouragement from the scripture, from the Bible, for us to wait for the coming of the Lord patiently. Bible promised us that the Lord will come and our difficulties, our depressions, our life problems, whatever, however deep, however disgusting, however ugly it is. Everything going to be solved when Jesus comes. And that's why second coming is our hope, you know, and our hope for us who believe in Jesus. 
And that is the belief that the scoffers, nowadays people want to pull us away. They say to what? How long have you been waiting? Jesus has been has died for more than 2,000 years ago. What is he doing now? Yeah? Nothing happens. Everything just happens. You know, I mean, the, the sun rises every day and sets every evening. Nothing happens. But do you really, do you really believe what you believe is something that's true or not? And those are what we it, it create doubt in, inside of us. And doubt is a problem that every one of us has to face. And we have to face correctly. And this is why we come every day here for the encouragement. Right? Because doubt is not is something that pretty common. You you think that I, I speak in here like you know I really have confidence I mean in our life, sometimes I have doubt too. You know. But it's not a matter of you know whether you have doubt or not. It's a matter of how you handle it. And that's why as a Christian you have to learn how to handle doubt. Because doubt will come. Doubt on the love of God. Doubt on the second coming. Doubt on the hope of our salvation. Doubt on the meaningfulness of this service. Doubt on the meaning, the truth, the truthfulness of the Bible, of the Word. Doubt, doubt, doubt. But then, we can go back here in, in what Peter wrote on chapter 3 verse 1 this is the cure of doubt that was provided by Peter Peter says this is now the second letter that I'm writing to you beloved in both of them what did he say I'm stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder so Peter is giving us reminders okay he's giving us reminders so that he can give us so that it, so, so we can think about that things again but the true things again and it's not just a you know a regular reminder because he has a goal in mind to stir up your sincere mind so if you are in doubt stir up your sincere mind Peter says your mind is sincere meaning that you know when you're doubt right it doesn't always mean that you are deceitful it's not always mean that you are you know you're trying to lie to yourself maybe get doubt come naturally to you right the, the important thing here when you experience that, you feel lazy spiritually. You know, you, you encounter something that you don't want. It, is, it seems like what the Bible says is not meaningful to me anymore. Peter said, stir up your mind. Stir. Stir up your mind. Yeah, and, and then he gave it a reminder. But he, he said, hey, stir up your mind. And mind is very important. Okay. People say that, well, if you are a Christian, you leave your mind at the door of the church. Because there is no way that what the Bible says is logical or rational. People say that, right? No, 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 no. When you are a Christian, your mind is very important. You have to believe the Bible with all your mind. You, know, read the, you, you get a point to you uh, in, in Romans chapter 12, right? But, this is very important. Stir up your sense of mind. You feel lazy. You, you feel you feel you know not meaningful. You feel like you know everything that you do is uh, you know is, is bad and is uh, you know it's not contributing anything to your life. Well, stir up your mind. Stir up your mind. And these are how Peter says how to stir up your mind. Some reminders. These are the reminders, right? Remember God's promise and commandment. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 1. This is now the second letter I'm writing to you. In both of them, I'm storing up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the prediction of the holy prophets and the commandments of the Lord and Savior through your apostles. Prediction. Prediction. Right? This is again, uh, Peter is pointing out to what the promises that the Bible wrote. The Bible wrote a lot of promises. Promise of our salvation if we believe in Jesus Christ. Promise of the heaven to come. Promise of the uh, uh, you know, eternal life. Promise of the second glorious second coming where we are all going to be invited by Jesus to sit down on the dinner table, the glorious dinner table, 
<laughs> you know, the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, what is, uh, the, the Lamb of God stayed at right? Those are the, uh, the promise of the prediction. Remember those, remember those. And then remember the commandment. You know, the Bible is full of commandments. Every word, every word of the Bible is actually something that can be useful to you. That's why uh, I never tire of encouraging you to read the Bible. Because that is one way for you to actually thwart those false prophets. Okay? Because those, remember, those false prophets are going to say something even from the Bible. They are even quoting the Bible. And they are interpreting them wrongly. What they, they will interpret them according to what they want. But those are not necessarily the one that's correct. So how can we know? How can we know if you watch TikTok video or you read Google, you know, search results, how do you know whether it's true or not? If you already know, if you read the Bible so you know, you know, which one is actually bad interpretation, which one is good. Right? So remember God's promise and command. Right? And then number two, we need to know what are the reminders, the fate of the universe. Where are we going? Where are we going with this universe? Right? Second Peter chapter 3 verse 5. For they, those scoffers, those false prophets, those false teachers, they del deliberately overlook this fact that the heaven existed long ago and the earth was formed out of the water and through water by the word of God. What is the thing that you need to remember about the universe? It was created by the word of God. If you, if you read the book of Genesis, you can see that God is actually creating everything from nothing. Ex nihilo. From nothing to something by what? By just uttering words. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Right? He says, Be here. Let there be light. And the light is there. That's how powerful God is. Right? And it, 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 it looks like a, you know, it's, it's, it's a mythical book. But this is what the word of God is. And that is, that, you know, um, and a lot of scientists actually, you know, there's a lot of research, you know, if, if, uh, uh, if you go, you know, so there are several research uh, institutions and actually like devoting themselves to actually proving that this is what happens. So it's not necessarily that, you know, this is just mythical that, you know, if, if you got a PhD in physics, you can easily deny that from happening. No. People actually, you know, uh, trying to understand more about this concept, okay, and then they, uh, the concept of creation, and they understand more and more, and because of their research, they become more and more believing in in the, Bible, in the Bible says, right? So, the first thing that we need to remember is that the earth was formed out of water to water by the word of God. And died, and then on verse 6 here, and that by means of this, the world that, that existed was deluged with, with, uh, with water and pebbles. You remember in the book of Genesis, the story of Noah, right? People in, people in the world at the time grows very, very, you know, evil. So the Lord decided that the, He's going to save no one, and and He's going to punish the world by water, right? Now on verse seven, but by the same word, the heaven and earth that now exist are stored up for fire. Remember, at the end of Noah's flood, the Lord promised Noah, say that He will not punish the world with water anymore. What is He going to punish the world with? Fire. Right? By the same way, the heaven and the earth that now exist are stored for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the unworthy. That is the fate of the universe. Our universe is going to be destroyed. It's a bad news, but it's what it is. Right? But on, 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 on verse 10 it says, But the day, when is that going to happen? The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heaven will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. When, we have, you know, when, when the Lord feels that's the, that the time, enough ungodliness in the world, that's what we, get, what, that's what we have in store. Okay? The earth going to pass away and everything going to be burned up and dissolved. But that, that's a, that, now remember, that's God promise, right? That's the promise, right? The promise is not just that the world is going to be destroyed, period. The promise is that the world is going to be destroyed, but 
the Lord going to create a new world for us, the believers. That is the promise of the Bible. That is the promise of God. So, when we read the, the verses here, the fact of the universe, that there is a destruction coming, it's actually a, a hope for us. Because after the destruction, the Lord will basically just create everything anew. Even us. I'm pretty sure at that time I, we, we already died probably, right? Uh, unless it comes like maybe, you know, immensely. <laughs> but, you know, if it, it, it comes like, you know, 100 years from now, you know, and maybe all of us died already. But you know what? When that day comes, when Jesus came on the second time, we all going to be given a new body. New body that will never rot. That will never have diabetes. That will never have any diseases. Right? A perfect body. The new world. Those are what we expect. That's what we have to remind ourselves. Okay? And that's why the, the message of the Bible is very, very, you know, it's very, very amazing. You know, you know it, these are 66 books written 1,400 years. And it tells us the, the creation of the universe and and the end of oh, right? And that's why we have to remind ourselves. Those are we, we have to stir our mind with it, right? Now, but then we still do not know when that can happen, right? Because in verse 10 there it says the day of the Lord will come like a thief. When a thief comes to your house, he will not announce it, right? Then he will not be a thief. I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe live in California nowadays. Because they are so daring now, right? But but you know, usually, usual thief, right? They come to your house, they will not announce it, right? And that's what the day of the of the Lord could going to happen, right? They're going to come like a thief, meaning that oh, suddenly it happens, we didn't realize it, right? So that's why we have to be careful. It will happen, but we don't know when that happened, right? But what? But what is that? You know, complaint that's saying that you know, well, you know, um, that scoffers is saying that until now nothing happens. Day in, day out, you know, the sun rise, the sun set, nothing happened. When is this going to happen, right? Remember, that is actually something that Peter also wanted us to learn, want to stir our mind with, right? Because that revealed the patience of God. Every day we wake, wake up, every day, we want a morning, when we wake up in the morning, and we realize that the world is still intact, it's not burned yet. It's not, it's, it's not destroyed yet. It's just another day the Lord express His patience. It's another day that the Lord is doing what? He's doing this. Do not overlook this one fact. Second Peter 3 verse 8. Beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Okay. God lives outside, outside of the timeline. He doesn't live in the fourth dimension. This dimension is even beyond that, right? Because for the Lord, time is just one thing that He plays with, <laughs> right? We we all live in time, so we also know that anything that happened yesterday or the past, anything that happened tomorrow, we don't know yet. But it's not same with the Lord. The Lord lives, you know, outside of the time continuum, right? So for Him. One day is not a thousand years, thousand years is one day. He has full control of the, of, the, of the time. And verse 9, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but what? Is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish and that all should reach repentance. Number one, why the Lord is still waiting? Why the end is not coming yet? Because the Lord is patient. He still wants people to repent. He still wants more people to become his children. And he also wants, he also patience because he also wants us, his children, to also grow more mature in our faith. And time will refine us. We will grow more mature in faith. Okay, and that is what God wants us to do. Right? And that's why God is so patient. Well, He's not coming yet because He's so patient. So tomorrow morning when you wake up and you realize you're still on your bed, okay, and you realize that your, your, your house is still intact, thankful, thank 
God for his patience. Because probably there is something in our character that God still wants us to fix, still wants us to refine. Or maybe there is someone in our life that, is, that he, God wants us to reach out. Maybe. God is so patient. God is patient. Right? And he, he doesn't want everybody, anybody to, to, to perish. He wants everybody to get salvation. And uh, he wants everybody to repent. Right? So remember, remember, patience of God. And then, with that patience of God, what do we do? We need to wait in diligence. Right? We need to wait in diligence. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 11, Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people are you to be in, in lives of holiness and godliness? That's what we're looking for. Holiness and godliness. Waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly body will melt as they burn. Now be careful with that. It doesn't mean that you, have, you can do something to hasten the coming of the day of the Lord. Right? I mean, there are some belief in the world here that I do something bad to hasten the end of the world. Right? Um, no. <clears throat> Remember, the time is all to be on the by, by hastening in here, it means that we're supporting that. We actually use our life so that, you know, we are becoming more prepared, you know, when, when, that, when that, the time comes. According to his promise, verse 13, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. See, that's, that's what I, 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 I mentioned before, right? The, the world will be dis destroyed. But there will be new heavens and a new earth. There will be new heavens and new earth. It is more beautiful than what we have right now. Right? Continue. In verse 14, Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting, remember, that's what we do right now, right? Waiting, because right now God is patient, because now we are waiting for this, be diligent to be found by Him without spot or blemish. We have to train ourselves Right? So that we can become without spot or blemish. Are we struggling with sin? Well, ask yourself, right? Ask yourselves. Is there any sin that I'm still struggling with? Right? The time that the Lord gave us, well, the earth is still in time. It's actually the time for us to work on that. So that we can work and we can we can get closer to Him, we can we, we can we can get away from that sin. We can do more repentance. We can get closer to God. We can be strengthened in our faith. Right? And we can be at peace. We have to work at peace. Are we, uh, are we more confrontational now? Do we live like, you know, uh, nobody likes us anymore? <laughs> Maybe we need to practice our peace, become a peaceful, become a peacemaker. Right? And fifthly, count the patience of our Lord as salvation. And we just read, we just read, uh, read that, right? Just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom of Jerusalem. This is the proof. Okay, some people says that Paul writing um, didn't match what Jesus taught. Okay, that's a lot of people, you know, a lot of false teaching going on right now, right? Um, and this one here, statement by Peter basically stated that Paul's letters is actually gospel, uh, actually Bible. It's actually the word of God, right? The, the Bible canon is not some, something that was created like in the year 300 by, by, by a certain council, right? It was actually something that's already, you know, um, uh, inherited from generation to generation since Jesus uh, resurrected. Okay, and and here is uh, Paul, uh, Peter is saying that hey. Paul already wrote all, 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 of, all of one of those. Learn from what he's writing. Okay? And then on verse 16 here, as he does in all letters when he speaks in in, of these matters. Now, this interesting thing. There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. Have you read scripture and you like confused what is what does this thing mean? Well, um, don't worry. Peter was still, I mean, feel the same way. <laughs> Even Peter, right? Apostle Peter, right? He, when he read, when he read um, uh, you know, the, the writing of Paul, he says, here yeah, there are some things in them that are hard to understand. <laughs> right? Uh, but this is the important thing is, he says, the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction, right? It maybe takes time for us to understand some difficult things in the Bible. 
right? There's some difficult writing about what we have to admit, right? Maybe that takes take us time and diligent study to understand them. But what Peter is actually uh, uh, reminding us here is that make sure that you have to prevent yourself to believe from believing what the ignorant and uncivil twisted into the introspection. It's not that you probably don't understand it. Okay? Maybe it takes time for you to understand the difficult passage. But you have to understand when someone actually interpreted it wrongly. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. You know, when, when someone actually used that difficult passage to pull us away from God. Because there are some principles that we have to hold. Verse uh, verse 17. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A lot of people, a lot of people that um, that no longer believe in Jesus, no longer believe in Christianity, right? Because they have a very shallow understanding of the Bible, and nobody explains it to them. And that is very, 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 very important. Right? If any of us, any of us here, any of us that you know listen to the video, right? Any of us has questions about some difficult passage in the Bible, right? Ask, ask, right? You can ask, you know, any other, you know, Pastor Ed, Pastor Randy, and you know, ask me, and you know, or we can discuss it. We can have discussions, right? We can have discussions. Uh, that that is how the fellowship is actually important, right? Don't just conclude difficult passages according to just what you want to believe, right? Take care that you are not carried away with the error of those people and those who A lot of people, a lot of people, if you go into TikTok or you go to YouTube, right? They share how they no longer believe in Jesus. They share how they no longer become a Christian. If you listen to those testimony closely, you're going to see that a lot of them, they, 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 they have questions about the Bible and nobody helped them understand. So now it's because, and because of that they pull a wrong conclusion. That's why they're very important for us. If we feel doubtful after reading some Bible, let's discuss it. Let's ask the questions for us. Let's, let's discuss it, right? We have Saturday fellowship, home fellowship, or we can, you know, um, send me a WhatsApp, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, and we, we, we can discuss about it, right? Okay, but that's very important. We have to take care that we are carried away with the error of all people and lose our own stability. Grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? And we're gonna end. I'm gonna end this with several uh, verses here to, you know, to for you to. Um, uh, to remember, right? Number one is that Romans 2 offers to do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal, renewal of your mind. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Several things are very important, right? The first, as I mentioned, the role of mind is very important in, in, in Christianity. We believe the Bible with our mind. We believe that Jesus died and rise on the third day from you know, those are true historical events. The earth was created by the word of God, that is the true historical event. Right? So we have to be conform we have to be transformed in the of your mind. And that is not that is not the uh, the world we believe right now. Which means that whatever we believe right now, big chance, we are going to go against the flow. There's a lot. Of, there's a bad cultural flow that's growing in America and the world, and we as a Christians has to stand in the middle of that flow to go against the flow, and that is tiring. That is not easy, right? But that is that is what we have to remind ourselves, right? Where can we get the the, the, the strength? Where can we get the strength to go against the world? Well, how can we get the strength to go against the flow of the culture? Romans 8, verse 26, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Remember, one perk of us becoming a Christian, believing in Jesus Christ, is that God sent the Holy Spirit to live inside of our hearts. And that Spirit now is give us strength, give us wisdom, give us ability. 
to do the will of God, to stand in the midst of the evil world. And that is something that we have to be remember, right? And then Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9, that those are the ones that uh, Ethan Pro uh, uh, read earlier, right? For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of work so that no one may boast. A lot of people that uh, put their testimony on YouTube on TikTok that they no longer becoming Christian, they came from a tradition of a church tradition that seems to be like you're giving a, 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 a rule that is more than necessary. I know there's one person that um, that gave testimony that you know he see grew up in a church that you know um, no girls should have the ear pierced. You know, and, and and you have to have a role like you know you have to have a certain kind of clothing, you know, for example, right? So there are, there are several you know there are several culture here, right? Uh, that the uh, uh, that is more than necessary, and those people that come from the culture, it's not explained about why the reason why that's so, and that's why it's important. Now it doesn't mean that we as a Christian we can do everything we want and we can we can wear everything that we think like we have to know what is decent. We have to know what is you know um, um, what what is good according to you know what we believe, right? But there's some churches that have like an extra rules, extra rules, extra you know uh, you know rules that you know that's not necessary, and that can be detrimental to people's belief, right? That's why it's very important that we become safe. It's truly because of the grace of God. When we sit here and we realize that we can have hope in salvation, and we can have hope with the second coming of Jesus, that is because God's grace. It's not because our efforts. It's because God's grace. Our And that God's grace is actually giving us the Holy Spirit so that now we have the strength, we have the wisdom, and we have the joy to make efforts to better ourselves. That's how it goes. Right? So, last thing here, get involved in digital mission. Okay? Um, you know, if you go to YouTube, you go to TikTok, there's a lot of, a lot of testimony there, people sharing that, you know, why they don't believe in Jesus anymore. Why is that? I can see that, you know, um, people that have like a, for those that, you know, be, uh, uh, coming out from doubt, coming out, you know, resolving from the doubt. That they become they, their belief becomes strengthened, you know, after their struggle, after their prayer, you know, after you know their devotion. Those people usually don't put their video on YouTube, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? The one that puts video usually are the bad ones, the one that have better testimony. And that's why it has like a bias, you know, a perception to us that oh, you, um, uh, it looks like that Christianity is in bad shape, right? So that's why I think. Get involved in digital mission. I don't know, you know, think about it. How we can get involved in digital mission? Because the right, there's a lot of information running around in digital info, in, in digital world. And it's very, very, some of them are very, very dangerous. Because a lot, of, a lot of people, those are the source of information we make decisions based on. So keep, keep that in mind, right? And as, as Peter says, right, stir up, stir up our mind, stir up our sincere mind with reminders. Okay, because so we know, even though we have a fear of the universe, we still have hopes. That's great. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us a lot of promise. You have promised us that you can give us salvation. You promise us that, you know, um, uh, we can have the Holy Spirit so that we can have strength in our weaknesses. And we thank you, God, that you have given us those. And we thank you that you always, every day, you express your patience. We can experience your patience. Because you haven't destroyed the world until now because you want more people to get saved. Lord, we want to keep that in our mind so that we can grow in our faith every day in our life, becoming better and better, more righteous, and we can uh, help us, Lord, as we struggle to get rid of our sin nature. And we also pray, Lord, that we can also reach out to those around us that needs your word. Be with us, Lord, as we take this journey in the world. 
because we know that you are holding our hands every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.